I just saw that the U.S. just signed off another $8.7 billion military aid package to Israel, and Swansea came over and walked away with another $1.9 billion. Um, these numbers, I think, they just go over people's head. They don't even really yeah. think about it anymore. Right. Um, but I'm also wondering, like, we can keep on putting, giving aid and throwing huge numbers around, but uh, there is an issue with our ability to produce munitions. Right. Like we talked well, about, yeah, that's missiles. actually... Right. That's that's become obvious recently, um, you know, that there was that sixty one billion dollar aid package that was passed um, and and that was supposed to make the, the difference. Clearly, it hasn't. And now actually what you're finding is that the U.S. has actually not been able to spend. There was a, a portion of that was set aside for for, you know, munitions and weapons for for Ukraine and they have, you know, a lot of that money is still unspent because they don't have the weapons to spend them on. And they've got to produce them. Their factories are turning them out, but not at a sufficient rate. You know, that's where we are. So you can talk about, you know, two billion, ten billion, 10 billion, whatever, but it doesn't really mean anything because, um, you know, when it comes down to it, it's like, you know, how many guns and missiles are coming out of these factories? And the answer is not many. Right. So, I mean, when we give these aid packages, does do we need to look at it in a different way? I mean, what does it mean? I, I would rather have a list of what is being sent. Yeah. Um, the, the, the number doesn't mean anything so much because the U.S. just prints money and the, the MIC right. just yeah, bills right. what it the, wants. The dollar money, dollar number really doesn't mean much of anything. I think, again, it's sort of uh, um, similar to you know education in this country. You get people bragging, well, we spend a billion dollars on education, whatever. Yeah, but the kids are just as dumb as they were five years ago when he spent a, a quarter dumber. of that amount. <laughs> yeah, maybe a little dumber or whatever. You know, it's just, there's no point in bragging about how much you spend, right? Actually, that's a number you should try to reduce, all other things being equal, of course. Um, but yeah, what's, substan you know, you know how many uh, Patriot interceptors, how many, you know, whatever, um, are you actually providing? And interestingly, over the last several months, you know, they, occasionally the Pentagon will publish a list, but they're not, they used to actually give the numbers to show, oh, we gave them, you know, 100 of these systems and 500 of those. Now they don't actually give the numbers. And, and um, I, I think Brian Berletic is correct about this. He suspects because the numbers are so small that it's embarrassing and they just, they've, so they've actually <laughs> have stopped actually indicating the quantities. So these lists are, are meaningless. And, um, you hear about the Ukrainians, the Ukrainians are complaining and you know, they say, you know, we don't have enough arms. He, the soldiers on the front are saying that the generals are saying that. And, um, you know, they, they I don't think they've really come to understand that America has limits. You know, the great U.S. military machine actually has some very severe limits and they're they're just not able to give you what you want. They can't, um, you know, fulfill your wish list. Right but we're talking about trying to get involved into all sorts of conflicts around the world. And now the U S is just going to beat China, you know, be, beat Iran, beat Russia. It's, it's insane. We were just going through our proxies. We have, uh, we're running out. Um, and it doesn't seem to be something that politicians, maybe they're not aware of it or they are and just don't want to believe it. Um, it's, it's hard to, hard to say. Um, yeah. Right. There just seems to be very little awareness, you know, if there, um, you, you do see these reports, but I, th I think there's this kind of this overwhelming smugness that has not really been shaken yet. You know, the sense that, hey, we're number one, so what are we worried about? Right. It just means, you know, we just got to spend more money. We just got to whatever, just pass another bill. And the, the thought that, hey, you know, actually we don't have much of a uh, military industrial capacity it's dawned on a few experts and they're starting to write about it you know even in the west but it just hasn't seeped through to the political class i think they still are it just um, insufferably smug you know they still are kind of like they they're still living in the 1990s and it just it feels so good to be that smug and they you know the, the incident you start saying wait a second we're in real trouble we got to do something here you know we got to start building factories we've got to start reestablishing, you know these uh production chains and so on and so forth um you don't hear that because <laughs> you know first of all it's going to be very costly and it's something that um 
you become the bearer of bad news and you don't believe in America, it's much easier on the other side to say, hey, we're number one. I believe in America. Shut up. You know, let's just write, let's just pass another bill, you know, for another $10 billion for Ukraine. It just, it sounds better. It sounds, you know, people who don't want to think about it say, oh yeah, what's this guy? You know, he's, he's actually suggesting that we're going to have to make some sacrifices and real adjustments. And and it, the, the thing about it, it's not just that, you know, that, these this uh, these military industrial arrangements have become very cozy for a lot of people. You know, it's it means that a lot of pockets get lined, and you know those are the people in power, the lobbyists and the congressmen who see the are going to probably be future lobbyists, and they don't really want to change the whole system. You know, make something that's streamlined and and uh, it, it it doesn't really work out for them. It's just like the the way things are now that these really lucrative contracts okay yeah they overcharge but i get my share of it you know it's i don't think people those people at the top um you know they're very comfortable with it and it's just so it's much easier to just keep on thinking hey you know what 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 me worry you know we're number one